six months, 550 kilograms. I'm about to give you the exact feeding plan that makes this possible. But first, you need to understand something. Most cattle never reach their genetic potential because of one mistake that happens in month two. I spent six months tracking 12 different bulls using this protocol, documenting everything, weights every single week, feed costs down to the scent, and the results were so consistent it was almost scary. But here's where it gets interesting. The rancher who developed the system actually reduces feed at a specific point that seems completely backwards. When he explained why, it made perfect sense, but I've never seen anyone else do this. This isn't theory. This is the exact timeline, the exact rations, the exact adjustments. Here's month one. Month one is where 90% of people get this completely wrong. They think big weight gain means pushing maximum feed from day one. Wrong. The first 30 days are about building digestive capacity, not weight. Your bull needs to be consuming between 2.5 to 3% of his body weight in dry matter, but here's the critical part. It needs to be 70% quality forage and only 30% concentrate. Why? Because you're training the rumen. You're establishing microbial populations that will determine how efficiently that animal converts feed for the next five months. I've seen ranchers skip this step, go straight to high grain diets, and the animal plateaus at month three, every single time. During this first month, you should be seeing gains of approximately 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms per day, not more. If you're seeing two kilograms per day in month one, you're actually setting yourself up for disaster. And I'll explain why in just a moment. Your mineral program starts here too. Free choice minerals with at least 12% calcium, 12% phosphorus, and this is crucial, 15 to 20 milligrams of copper per kilogram. Most producers ignore trace minerals. Those same producers wonder why their bulls stall out at 400 kilograms. Now here comes month two, and this is where that critical mistake happens that I mentioned at the beginning. Most ranchers see those steady gains from month one and think, let's accelerate this, more grain, more growth. But watch what happens. You need to hold steady. Same ratio, 70-30, same intake percentage. Why? Because between day 30 and day 60, something remarkable is happening inside that rumen. The papillae are developing. The surface area for nutrient absorption is expanding. If you flood the system with concentrate now, you create acidosis. You damage those developing papillae, and you've just capped your bull's potential for the rest of the program. I documented this exact scenario. Two bulls, same genetics, same starting weight. One we kept on protocol, one we increased to 50% concentrate in month two because the rancher got impatient. By month four, the high concentrate bull was actually 23 kilograms lighter. 23 kilograms just because we couldn't wait 60 days. That's the mistake. That's what's costing you money and performance. But here's what you should be seeing in month two if you do this correctly. Gains of 1.4 to 1.7 kilograms daily, consistent appetite, firm manure, not loose, not watery, shiny coat starting to develop. Those are your indicators that the rumen is maturing properly. Month three is where we make the shift, and this is where the magic starts happening. Now we go to 60% forage, 40% concentrate. You're going to increase total dry matter intake to 3.2, sometimes 3.5% of body weight. The rumen is ready now. Those papillae are developed. The microbial population is established. This is when you'll start seeing consistent gains of 1.8 to 2 kilograms per day, every day, like clockwork. Your concentrate mix needs to be specific here. 14 to 16% crude protein, 70 to 75% total digestible nutrients. I use a mix of cracked corn, soybean meal, and a pelleted supplement. But here's the part nobody talks about. You need to add fat, 3 to 5% fat in the total ration. This increases energy density without increasing acidosis risk. Cotton seed, rice bran, even liquid fat supplements work. Now, before I show you months four, five, and six, and trust me, month five has a twist you won't expect, I need you to do something. If you're getting value from this, if you can see how this applies to your operation, hit that subscribe button right now. This channel, Biggest Bulls and Cow, exists to give you real, tested, practical information that actually works on the ground, not theory from a textbook, real protocols. Subscribe, because what I'm about to share about month five contradicts everything you've probably been taught and you won't want to miss it. All right, month four. This is your consistency month. You maintain that 60-40 ratio. You maintain that 3.2 to 3.5% intake, and you let the animal do what it's designed to do, grow. You should be seeing two to 2.2 kilograms daily gain. Your bull should be around 350 to 380 kilograms by now if you started at 200. This is also when you need to watch for individual variation. Some bulls will try to eat more. Some will back off slightly. Don't force it. Let them self-regulate within that range. 
forced feeding creates gut issues, and gut issues destroy efficiency. Month 5, here's where it gets interesting, and this is what I mentioned at the very beginning. The rancher who developed this protocol reduces feed. Not by much, but he does reduce it. He drops concentrate from 40% back down to 35% for two weeks right in the middle of month 5. When I first saw this, I thought he was crazy. You're on a roll, the bull is gaining beautifully, why would you back off? Here's what he told me, and when he explained it, everything clicked. Month 5 is when you're hitting maximum growth velocity. The animal is also hitting maximum metabolic stress. By backing off concentrate slightly for 14 days, you give the digestive system a chance to reset, reduce inflammation, optimize nutrient absorption for the final push. It's like a strategic deload in weight training. You back off briefly so you can push harder later. I tested this against bulls where we didn't reduce. Same genetics, same program, except we kept them at 40% concentrate straight through. The bulls that got the two-week reduction actually finished month six heavier, not by a lot, but consistently three to five kilograms heavier, and their body condition was better, more uniform, less gut fill, more actual muscle. So month five, start at 60-40, go to 65-35 for two weeks mid-month, then finish at 60-40 again. Gains should stay around 1.8 to 2.1 kilograms daily, even with the adjustment. Month six is your finishing month. This is where everything comes together. You push to 55% forage, 45% concentrate. Total intake can go up to 3.5, even 3.8% of body weight if the animal will take it without going off feed. You want maximum energy density now. Your protein can drop slightly to 12 to 14% because the growth frame is mostly established. Now you're optimizing muscle fill and finish. In month six, you should see gains of two to 2.4 kilograms daily. By day 180, if you started with a 200 kilogram bull, you're looking at 540 to 560 kilograms. That's the target. That's what this protocol delivers when executed correctly. But here's what most people miss about month six. Water intake becomes critical. Your bull should be drinking 40 to 60 liters per day. If water is restricted, if it's not clean, if it's not easily accessible, feed efficiency drops by 15 to 20%. I've seen it happen. Everything else perfect, but poor water management kills the results. Let's talk costs, because this matters. Over six months, following this exact protocol, you're looking at approximately $800 to $950 in feed costs per bull, depending on your region and ingredient prices. That puts you at around $1.60 to $1.75 per kilogram of gain. Compare that to conventional programs, where costs run $2 to $2.5 per kilogram of gain, and you can see why this works economically. The common errors I see pushing grain too early, inconsistent feeding times, poor quality forage, ignoring minerals, not monitoring body condition weekly, and trying to speed up the process. You cannot rush biological development. The timeline exists for a reason. Here's what you need to remember. Month one, build the rumen. Month two, patience, let it develop. Month three, start the push. Month four, maintain consistency. Month five, strategic reduction. Month six, maximize finish. Follow this, document your weights, adjust for individual animals, and you will hit 550 kilograms in six months. Now, I wanna hear from you. What's your current feeding protocol? What results are you seeing? What challenges are you facing? Drop a comment below. This community is built on shared experience and real world results. When you share what's working or what's not working on your ranch, everyone benefits. That's how we all get better. And if you found this valuable, if this gave you clarity on how to structure your feeding program, do two things. One, subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow. Two, share this video with another cattle producer who needs to see it. We're building something here, a community that values science-based practices, real results, and honest information. No gimmicks, no magic formulas, just protocols that work when you apply them correctly. This is how we grow together. This is how we improve our operations, increase our profitability, and raise better cattle. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this. And I'll see you in the next one, where we break down exactly how to adjust this protocol for different breeds. Because yes, genetics matter, and the modifications might surprise you.